So this week, Chevrolet doesn't even care about Ford and Chrysler. <laughs> they want to beat the other divisions of GM. So like, comment, subscribe, enjoy. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you next week. There he goes. Pretty proud of himself and pretty sure of himself. A fast comer last year calls himself the quick wide track this year. Maybe just a little too sure of himself because look out Pontiac, there goes Chevrolet farther out in front. The sales race has never really been close of course, but last year a lot of folks were talking about Pontiac's styling and Pontiac did take a few sales away from us. But this year they're talking about Chevrolet styling. Chevrolet has the beautiful shape for 1965. Look at that roof line, the hood, the graceful full sweep of the entire body. This year, it's Chevrolet, the car to remember. Besides, the 1965 Impala is a car with class and prestige. If the Catalina is big, the Impala is just as big, outside and inside. Its overall length is just 1.6 inches shorter than Catalina. It's the same width outside. Inside, and this may surprise you, Impala has more room, headroom, legroom, hip room, and shoulder room. So ask yourself this, is the Catalina a big, nice looking car? Sure, but not the big, beautiful car the 1965 Impala is. Besides, styling and trim have to be more than looked at. They have to be lived with. Take that trim around the headlamps on the Impala. Easy to clean, to keep bright and new looking. But in the Catalina, the deeply recessed trim is awkward to reach, hard to keep clean. And at the rear, the Impala's backup lights are a distinctive integral part of its triple tail light clusters. Catalina backup lights are an option, costing an extra $14.31. At the rear, the Impala offers more convenience because of the four and a half inch lower lift over height of the trunk opening, closer to the ground for easier loading and unloading. Inside, there's luxury and high style in the simulated wood paneling on the Impala instrument panel, a feature found only on the more expensive Pontiac Star Chief and Bonneville models. The Impala panel boasts other advantages too, such as a larger glove box. The Catalina glove box is small and awkward to use. Other Impala instrument panel advantages include conveniently grouped instruments that can be viewed at a glance, the Catalina driver must take time to look at separate instrument binnacles to his right. Other interior advantages on Impala include paddle type door release handles combined with the long comfortable armrests. The Catalina lacks these luxury touches. Incidentally, the door handles used on Catalina are the same handles used on Bel Air's. As for other appointments, an electric clock and a trunk light are standard equipment on the Impala. Both are extras on the Catalina. The clock costs $16.08 and the trunk light $7.10. As for comfort, besides having more room, the Impala buyer will find that a foam cushion rear seat is standard equipment on his car. On the Catalina four-door sedan, a foam cushion rear seat is not available. Now, how about performance? The Impala has a small turning diameter. This is one of the reasons why the Impala is a highly maneuverable car. However, the Catalina's wall-to-wall -wall and curb-to-curb -curb turning diameters are both two feet wider than the Impala's. Tough to turn, tougher to park. In terms of weight, the Impala four-door sedan with a V8 is 223 pounds lighter than the Catalina four-door V8 sedan. Even though the Chevrolet is lighter overall, the actual body, the portion from the firewall back, is heavier than Pontiac's. This is because Chevrolet's body has additional braces and beefed up areas. Consequently, the Chevrolet body resists twisting and shaking and is better isolated from road jolts and noises. Another point to make here, less weight means lower replacement costs on items like tires, more fuel economy with a lighter load, easier stopping and less wear on brakes. Let's look into that last one a little further. When it comes to quick stops, Impala's better braking pays off in balanced heads-up stops. Both cars have virtually the same swept drum area and brake lining area, but on the Catalina with a heavier front end, more braking is done by the front wheels, 
more heat is created, stopping efficiency is lowered, and brake lining life is reduced. Chevrolet uses the longer wearing bonded brakes. Pontiac still has the less efficient, shorter wearing riveted brake linings. Now it's possible that you may get a Pontiac minded prospect who is economy or performance minded. In that case, you can offer him an Impala equipped with anything from an economical 140 horsepower 6 to a 400 horsepower V8. With Catalina, no 6 is available and the 8s run only from 256 horsepower to 376 horsepower. And the Chevrolet has an overdrive transmission. Pontiac doesn't. Now how about price? The Catalina line consists of seven models priced close to Impala but actually more comparable to Bel Air in features, trim, and appointments. In four-door sedans, Bel Air lists at $178 less than the Catalina. And we had to add a glove box light to the Catalina to bring it up to Bel Air standards. As for the Impala, the luxurious Impala four-door sedan costs a big $239 less than a Catalina equipped the way most people buy. That means equipping the Catalina with a whole list of features, from a foam front seat to a glove box light, all of which Impala offers as standard equipment, and equipping the Impala with deluxe wheel covers. Moving higher, the Impala Super Sport Coupe with a V8 and power glide is $411 less than a similarly equipped Catalina 2 Plus 2 Sport Coupe. And the Impala Super Sport Convertible with a V8 and power glide is priced at $472 less than a comparable Catalina 2 Plus 2 Convertible. There's no doubt about it. The 1965 Chevrolet is a big car in every respect. In roominess, in styling, in engineering, in comfort, in luxury and convenience, but not in price. And it enjoys the traditional Chevrolet reputation for high resale value. For a large segment of your market, you've probably found that Chevelle is the right size car. And in its class, it outvalues the Pontiac Tempest, Olds F85 and Buick Special. Suppose we compare the popular sport coupes all on 115 inch wheelbase. The Malibu Super Sport versus the Pontiac Tempest Le Mans, the Olds F85 Cutlass, and the Buick Special Skylark. Now it's important to remember that these are comparable cars. In fact, all built on the same assembly lines. The Malibu's good looks and youthful styling make it the style leader. And the Malibu Super Sport offers convenience, engineering, and comfort features available only as extra cost options on the Skylark, Cutlass, and Le Mans, all top of the line BOPs. The Malibu Super Sport, slightly wider than the Le Mans, Cutlass, and Skylark, has a big car look. And it is bigger where it counts the most to driver and passengers inside. The Malibu Super Sport has more front leg room than all three for comfortable long distance motoring. There's other driver convenience too in the Chevelle ignition. It's on the right within easy reach of the driver. The Tempest ignition is inconveniently located on the driver's left. For the sports minded buyer, the Malibu Super Sport has as standard equipment, oil pressure, electrical and temperature gauges. The Le Mans, Cutlass and Skylark have only the conventional warning lights. On the outside, convenience is built into the Chevelle's low trunk sill, where it beats its closest competitor, the Tempest, in this dimension, with a trunk sill over eight inches lower. Another advantage engineered into the Chevelle is stopping power. The Chevelle's effective brake lining area of 168.9 square inches is greater than either the F85 or Special and comparable to the Tempest's 170 square inch lining. And just as important, the Chevelle has longer lasting bonded brake linings, while the BOP still use the outmoded riveted linings. Another performance factor is Chevelle's shorter length and lower steering ratios for easier steering and parking. But Tempest's 10 inch longer length is tougher to park. Women especially will appreciate the Chevelle's handling ease. Now let's talk engines. The Chevelle has two six cylinder engines to one for Bopettes. Chevelle and Tempest offer four V8 power plants, the F85 and Special only two. Also, the F85-6 is not available on the Cutlass. To team with the engines, Chevelle offers four transmissions, three-speed manual, three-speed with overdrive, 
four-speed manual, power glide. Neither the Tempest, F85 nor Special, offers an overdrive transmission, and their automatic transmissions are priced about $10 higher than power glide. Now that we've brought up prices, a careful buyer will discover that many of the good things he wants aren't free on the BOPs. Foam cushion front bucket seats, for example, are free, standard equipment, on the Malibu Super Sport, but cost $69.94 on the Buick Skylark. A center console with floor shift is standard on Malibu Super Sport when the customer orders a four-speed manual or power glide transmission. A console is optional on the Le Mans, Cutlass, and Skylark. But the cost isn't optional. It's $48.15 extra on Le Mans, $75.32 extra on an F-85 Cutlass, and $48.42 extra on Skylark. An electric clock is standard on Malibu Super Sport, an option on its BOP rivals. The clock costs $19.37 extra on the Le Mans, $16.14 extra on F-85 Cutlass, and $21 extra on the special Skylark. Backup lights are standard on Malibu Super Sport. On the Le Mans, $10.76 with manual transmission and $12.91 with automatic. On the F-85 Cutlass, $9.68 and special Skylark backup lights cost $10.65 extra. The Chevelle advantage in price continues as we look at total car costs. Suppose we compare prices of sport coupes with bucket seats, center console, V8 engine, automatic transmission, backup lights, and electric clock. Here are the price facts. The Malibu Super Sport Coupe cost $97.39 less than the Le Mans, $248.86 less than the Cutlass, and a great big $264.54 less than the Skylark. With Chevrolet and Chevelle, you have two hot ones for 1965. Two cars loaded with features, priced right, and styled for today's buyers that you can sell over anything comparable that Pontiac, Oldsmobile, and Buick have to offer. Demonstrate the difference. It's the difference that sells Chevrolet and Chevelle. Please like and subscribe to stay tuned for more videos.